Creatures of the Night, it's your girl Tati. Now I've been fighting off this fever since Monday night. And I'm gonna blame that on CM Punk for that bullshit promo we waited three hours for. Talking about, I've changed, I'm home. Sounding like your ex trying to win your ass back. You kinda didn't win me with that promo, but I'm gonna give you another chance on that. Now to make things even worse, right before Dynamite, I get an email and the email says, Hello, Tatiana. We regret to inform you that due to schedule conflicts, Undertaker will not be appearing at our Houston event. Oh my God, it's bad enough that I have to uh, buy a ticket to see my husband and now he's not gonna be appearing at all. So I'm just gonna have to wait for the next event. It is what it is. Give me a moment so I could cry my eyes out. First match of the night, we have John Moxley versus Jay Lethal. And we do have John's bestie on commentary, our homie Brian Danielson, who's sitting up there with an eye patch. Now, I love him on commentary too. And it was a little fun to have him um, throughout this tournament, giving his thoughts on things and also letting everybody know he's going to win this. Even though he's hyping up his bestie, he's letting us know he's still going to win the whole damn thing. And I'm starting to believe that's going to be the case. Now, we do have a really great matchup with these two, but I think what I appreciate about this tournament is that we all know there's going to be one winner. There can only be one winner. However, I do think that this tournament is going to do some favors for some people, especially someone like um, Jay Lethal, who's been walking around uh, with um, Sanjay in them, who's always helping him cheat or whatnot, and he can do things on his own for this tournament, which I do think is going to do him some favors because now people can kind of see him a little bit more on a serious side, take him more seriously as a singles competitor, competitor rather than having a whole bunch of idiots beside him helping him win. Um, and that's a Jay Lethal that I want to see right now. And I'm hoping um, after that tournament, we get to see bigger and better things with him and he can just drop these idiots um, while they're there. Great matchup for an opener. Um, I, I felt like right from the bat, there's just no way Jay Lethal was going to win. This kind of this this tournament kind of feel like this is going towards uh, Moxley or, or Brian Danielson, one of those bigger guys going to end up taking this. So I don't really see Jay Lethal um, winning this whole thing. But like I said, this tournament can do some favors for him and a couple of others on here. Moxley obviously takes the win. And um, you know what? I'm interested in seeing um, what's going to come uh, from this tournament for some of these guys. Uh, I don't really know whatever's going to happen in terms of when you win, what happens with the titles and all that stuff. But we are getting some matchups that we've never seen before with some of these combinations of guys. So that does make me feel a little bit more hyped about the tournament. Now, after that, we have a clip from Eddie Kingston from la uh, last weekend um, after his match with Brody King. He lost. He lost, like, by a lot. I mean, Brody was dominating that whole damn thing. And um, to be honest, Eddie kind of sounds a little defeated. But then he goes, win or loss, he's humble. And he's going to get himself ready to go against Brian Danielson for um, Collision this weekend. Now... After that little promo thing of him crying, here come Brian Danielson on commentary cutting his promo, talking about he's not humble in defeat, he's not humble in victory, he's gonna win this whole damn thing, and he doesn't give a damn what anyone has to say about that. And um, also, he had operation and all that stuff, and despite him being, um, you know, healing up from the operation and obviously that orbital bone break, he's going to take the win. And you know what? It's sounding predictable, and I'm not really liking that. So now we have Tony Schiavone with Sting and Ric Flair. They are announcing the location of the Revolution pay-per-view for next year. This is important uh, because Sting's going to be having his last match on there. And Tony Khan, being a huge-ass wrestling mark, has gotten a venue in Greensboro, North Carolina. Now, this is um, definitely an iconic choice because Ric Flair and Sting had their iconic match back in 1988, Class of the Champions. And everyone remember such an iconic match between the two of these um, guys. So they're obviously revisiting that place. And that's supposed to make that moment for Sting next year um, a little bit more iconic and special for him. So great job, Tony Khan, for getting such um, uh, you know amazing thing like this for Sting. Um, we have Tony Schiavone, who's standing between both of these guys, like a schoolgirl, just like, oh my God, Sting, oh my God, Rick. Like he just be doing the most. And he, let me just say this, I totally get it. 
Tony, I am just like you. If I was standing in between two icons, I would be doing the same thing. I don't like you, Rick, but I would be doing the same thing. So I totally understand where he's coming from. Now, after this, we have another match on the tournament. Roosh versus Mark Briscoe. Another great match on here. And, you know, I was looking at this and I'm just like, damn, like, Mark, I don't see you winning this one. But Mark still, you know, gives Roosh a really great fight. I am loving Roosh a little bit more every time you see him in the ring. He does have that personality in the ring where it's just like, oh, my God, I could just watch you all day. You're just so amazing. He absolutely love what he does. And you can tell he loves what he does. Same thing with Mark Briscoe, too. But Roosh. I'm rooting for you not to win this whole thing, but I'm rooting for you to have a great career. How about that? I still want Swerve to take this whole thing. Great matchup, but we do have Roosh taking the win, and I'm totally fine with that. So he has three points. Um, John Moxley, I forgot to say, he has six points now because he just had um, another win. So every win, it's uh, three points, and if it's a draw, you each get one point. Great matchup. Now after this, we do have Tony Storm. She's back there. We have RJ City. Um, who's talking to her and she's with Luther and Mariah May. Mariah is holding her title and Tony Storm looked like she just been celebrating ever since she won the damn um, AEW women's title and RJC lets her know that she has a match um, coming up next week but she ain't bothered. She a champion. She know how to defend herself. She cool. Now a little bit later on in the show RJ is with Mariah May and Mariah is saying that she wants the AEW uh, fans to see what she's all about and she wants an opportunity to get in the ring so she is standing in front of Tony Khan's office she goes in there so she can get her opportunity don't be surprised if next week we see Mariah versus Tony Storm for the title obviously so now we have our scumbag MJF who makes it to the ring he is still walking around with that cane and he comes into the ring and he says a lot of amazing things about Samoa Joe, you know, giving him his flowers and the crowd is chanting for Samoa Joe. And I'm just like, damn, this is the type of shit that I love to see. Thank you, MJF, for letting us know how great Samoa Joe is. We already knew that. Now, although he's saying all these wonderful things about Joe, he's letting everyone know that um, despite his hip being dislocated, despite his shoulder being hanging off by a thread, and he's probably feeling like whatever the hell Ric Flair feels right now, like an old ass man, um, he's still going to win that match at World's End, and he's going to retain his um, title, and I guess obviously the tag titles as well. Now, after he goes into that, you know, feel good promo, getting the crowd all hyped up, he takes the cane and he breaks that cheap shit in half, and everyone's all hyped up. Then the lights go out. And then we have four people come in the ring and attack him. Now, they have all black masks, their faces covered, everything. And in the back of their jackets, they have the picture of the devil mask on it. So obviously, we know who the hell sent these people. So they have their little uh, uh, kerfuffle for like two seconds. And then here comes Samoa Joe coming to save the day. And the other guys leave the ring and they make it to the back. Um, and then the lights go off again, but it kind of feels like there's some technical difficulties going on. And I'm just like, mm, I, I'm not really sure if like, you know, it's supposed, the screen's supposed to be black this long. I don't know what the hell was going on. But then there's a message being typed on the screen saying for Samoa Joe and um, MJ have to team up to um, go against two unknown people, obviously from that group, from the devil person. And um, that's supposed to be next week, Dynamite. Now, Samoa Joe looks over to MJF and like, bitch, I'm not even in this little storyline, so um, just tell him no and let's go. However, MJF ends up taking on this challenge on behalf of, of himself and Samoa Joe. And Joe's like, bro, didn't I just say I don't want to be in this shit? Now he's in it and they have a match next week. Who are these two guys? I don't know. They obviously have to reveal two of the guys in the group um, in order for him to have a match. Or they could pretend some two losers are part of the group just to throw um, MJF and Samoa Joe off. I don't know. Either way, I don't think I'm ready to see a reveal of two of the members that nobody cares about uh, versus the person in the devil mask so soon. But we'll see what happens next week on Dynamite. Up next, we have Wardlow making his way to the ring. Wardlow, where was your barber? Fire them. You're on TV, bro. Do something about that hair. Um, he's wearing black and purple and it's so cute. You know me, I'm a sucker for a man wearing black and purple. Like, he look good. 
uh, except for the hair thing. Now, he makes his way into the ring, and here we go. It's AR Fox already in there, and he goes and attack Wardlow before he can come in the ring. And I'm just like, oh, so this is how we're doing AR Fox, giving him a jobber's entrance? Okay. Now, AR Fox do get a couple of hits in before things turn sour, and it's all Wardlow's. And by the time they both get into the ring, the reference the bell, and Wardlow was in control pretty much that whole time. And I'm just like, after what I've seen from AR Fox, you want me to believe that AR Fox is going to be defenseless in this whole damn match? I couldn't even believe it. Now, I've been saying Wardlow needs a credible opponent, not some local jobber or someone they picked off the street who wouldn't mind getting in the ring for a couple of bucks. Um, they put him with someone as good as AR Fox. Um... I don't think we've ever seen the best of Wardlow, so I can't say that um, Air Fox is necessarily better than Wardlow, but he's better than Wardlow. Now, like I said, uh, Air Fox is defenseless here, and after a, a really nice senton from um, Wardlow, as big as his ass is, uh, we get a couple of power bombs, and then he headbutts AR Fox, and then the ref decides to, uh, you know, have them call off the match, ring the damn bell, this shit is over, Wardlow makes it to the back. Now, like I said, I wanted him to have a credible opponent, sure, AR Fox is, but AR Fox didn't do anything, so they're still trying to do this thing where it's like Wardlow's invincible, whatever, no matter who he gets in the ring with, he's going to damn near kill them, and honestly... I, I, I don't know. I want to see you actually wrestle, not do a couple of power bombs and a senton and it's over. I need more. Give a girl some more. Now, right after that, before our trios match, um, they're letting us know Dante Martin is back. And they're going to go and air uh, that injury that Dante had at the Supercard of Honor show earlier this year where he broke that ankle. And they said, well, we're going to air it. But everyone, please turn away. Please don't watch this. But we're putting it on. So don't watch this. And they put it on. And I'm just like, well, well, thank you for the warning. I already knew how gruesome this was, so I didn't look. But for everyone else, if you didn't take their warning to not watch this, then you saw a really horrible injury. So now we got trios action. We got Top Flight and Action Andretti versus the Hardys and Brother Zay. And I'm just like, great. Y'all don't really have trios. We don't know where the hell the trios champs are at. And um, wh why not bother the Hardys and take them away from their children and, and, and put them on on Wednesday night? So we get the Hardys and Brother Zay in a pretty fun match uh, with Top Flight and Action Andretti. And I'm not gonna lie, throughout this match, I kept feeling like a little bit nervous. Every time I see Dante in the ring, I'm just like, oh my god, every little flip, every little dip, every little whip, I'm just like, oh, please, please be careful. We don't want to see you get hurt again, or anyone else getting hurt again, especially like that. Now, obviously, we got two babyface teams going at it, or whatever. However, we knew what this was about. This was about showing that Dante is no longer handicapped, and that he can still wrestle. And we got a chance to see Dante uh, teaming up with Action Andretti, which we have not seen since he's been gone. That whole trio's got great chemistry. Um, Tony Khan, keep them together for a little bit before you break them up at some point or whatever. I would actually like to see these guys all together as a trio's. You guys already know who won. It was um, Top Flight and Action Andretti. Now, after this, they are about to celebrate or whatever with uh, an interview. And then here comes Penta, who interrupts and, you know, he looks at Dante. Now, it was Penta was the one that gave him that Canadian Destroyer onto the ladder, onto those tables and, and you know, the leg break and everything like that. They give each other dabs or whatever. And then he goes, well, it's three of y'all. I got two other friends too. So here comes Commander and El Hijo de Vikingo. Now, we got ourselves another trios match. I don't think they said when it's going to happen. But I'm looking at this and I'm like, alright, this is going to be Cirque du Soleil type of situation. And I'm okay with that. I want to see all six of these guys in the ring. It's going to be fire. Maybe we might get that uh, next week on Dynamite. And like I said, Dante, please, please be careful with all these flipping and shit. We don't want another break. Up next, we have the TBS title on the line, Emi Sakura versus Julia Hart. And this is a house rules match. And I was like, wait a minute, is this the first time Julia has her own house rules match? We've always seen that um, with the other members of the House of Black, but the first time we're seeing Julia having a match like this. So this was definitely a nice touch for her. So Emi Sakura chose the rules to be that um, 
no one can win via submission. Obviously meaning that Julia cannot use her Heartless to win. However, she uses the Heartless in this match. And I was thinking, oh, did, did we forget we're not supposed to do that? Because what was the point anyway? She did, she does it and it's cool or whatever. Um, but she ends up winning with a Moonsault. And I did enjoy this. Emmy, I enjoy seeing her in the ring and not in like, um, despite her losing, she's not looking like a jobber. She looks really great. And whoever she's in the ring with, she always makes sure that they look great too. And I wanna see more from Emmy as well. I would not mind seeing some gold on her at some point in her career. I do know she's like more in, I think her mid to late forties and she's still doing her thing. And I really do enjoy her. So somewhere down the line, I would love to see some uh, um, a title on her at least once. But Julia, she's doing her thing, and I really enjoy what we're seeing here. Tony Khan, you've helped made uh, some really great booking choices for Julia for her to get to where she's at right now. We need some more of those great choices for some of these other girls in the back that can definitely use some really great opportunities. Great match with these ladies. So now we have our stepdaddy Christian in the ring. He has the weakest security guard team I've seen in my life. I can go to Walgreens and feel protected by one of those little 70 year old men that they be having standing by the door. Um, they just look like random people that was chosen off the street. I'm just like, who are these people? Like for real guys, did you guys see those people on the security team? They, they ain't saving nobody tonight. Now, Christian is calling out Adam for him to come out. He calls him several times and Adam is keeping him waiting. And I'm just like, damn, Adam, like he's really saying it nicely. Can we just come out and just hear what he has to say? Now, Adam comes out and um, he actually standing in the ring and all that, um, you know, loser security team is standing in front of Christian. And Christian's like, you know, you know what? Y'all can go. Y'all useless anyway. You guys can go. I'll, I'll take you from here. Now, he's talking to Adam and he tells Adam He's sorry, he apologizes. Now the crowd, they ain't buying it. They're chanting out, bullshit, bullshit. And I'm just like, hold on, can we just give him a chance and hear what he has to say? Now here is Edge standing there and he is looking like a snack and I'm just looking at him and I'm just like, that t-shirt, the whole fit you got going on here is selling it to me. I wear similar clothes. So if I had that t-shirt, I could be looking cute in it too. I might buy it. Now, Christian, he says, after seeing what Adam did, to uh, our poor Luchasaurus, I mean, Kill Switch on Collision. Um, he got into his car and he started driving. Then he started reminiscing about their childhood and their career together and how much great times that they had and how they were great as a tag team and that they're not just friends, they're brothers. And how, you know, Adam don't got no daddy, but Christian's dad was like a father to him and you know, part of his life. And even till this day, Christian's dad is still Adam's number one fan. And I'm just like, oh my God, like he's really, really, really getting to our heart right now. This is a Christian I know, I know and love. Now, just when you think Adam is probably gonna give in to all this mess, um, he's just looking at Christian and just like, maybe he's not buying it, but maybe he might be. Then here come Christian talking about his mom, his mom who passed away recently um, from cancer and said that one of the last things that she told him was that she would love to see these two get back together in the ring, tagging at least one more time. And obviously he mentions Mama Copeland and we're just like, damn, that's gonna get Edge. That's gonna make him feel some type of way and probably join forces back with Christian again. Now, Edge, he kind of turns to the side and he's thinking about it. He's like, hmm, should I give him a chance? We were brothers. Yeah, we were probably the best tag team of all damn time. He's just thinking about it. Now, while he's thinking, here's Christian in the back, shining up that TNT title, nice and shiny. He looks like he's going to bop Edge in the head with it. Then Edge, obviously, he's one step ahead of Christian, turns around. And when Christian is about to go hit him with it, he gives Christian a nice kick in the nuts. I'm pretty sure that hurts. I don't have any, so I don't know. And now here is Edge on the mic. And he told him to go fuck himself and he's gonna take that TNT title from him next week on Dynamite. And to be honest, I don't know why we're doing this match so soon, but it is what it is. And I really did love this moment. This moment really, really showed something about Christian. Like Christian, he has some damn range. Get this guy a freaking movie or something. He is absolutely phenomenal and I love him. Adam, you're cool too. 
main event time and also part of the tournament, we have Swerve Strickland versus Jay White. I love both of these guys. Both of these guys needs a win. And I'm just like, damn, well, it can only be one of y'all this round. Well, you can get a draw and get one point each, but that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for our guys to make as much points as possible for them to actually win the tournament. Now, here comes Swerve, okay? After Jay White comes out, obviously. Now, Swerve comes out and Prince Nana comes out too, but Prince Nana has a crutch on. And I'm just like, is he, can he do the dance? Is he all right? Yes, he can do the dance. And he's swerving and driving, swerving, driving, all that, holding on to the crutch at the same time. And I'm like, look at you, Prince Nana. You're so freaking awesome. You don't need them crutches, but you're awesome as fuck. I fuck with you. Now, obviously, Swerve can't have anyone ringside. So Prince Nana crutches way back to the back. And we have a really great matchup with these two guys. And I'm not gonna lie. I really enjoy both of these guys. Swerve right now is on a real big high with the performances that we've been getting from him recently. Jay White was sort of on that way too until he lost um, his match with MJF. Now, while we knew he was gonna lose, I kind of felt the whole angle that they, that little stunt that they pulled off at the pay-per-view about his leg being injured on myself. I think it took away from the quality of the match, but we know Jay White is uh, damn near perfect in the ring and I love this guy. Now, really great matchup from these guys. And I was like, you know what? Let me call up Tony Khan and say, Tony, instead of 20 minutes, can this be 30? I, I need to get the most that I can from these guys. Obviously, we don't get that. Now, if the match starts, um, you know, where there's gonna be some time left over, it's gonna go into overtime or whatnot, which is a situation that happens here. And for the first time, I think I heard, for the first time, where Justin Roberts announced that there was five minutes left of the match. And I don't remember them um, giving that little uh, reminder before in the other matches. Now I have stated that it would be cool if they put like a timer um, here and there so we can see like how much time is left. Um, that would get people to be a little bit more um, hyped with the situation, especially towards um, the time running out, but whatever, it's their choice, whatever. Um, really great matchup from these guys. And, and I'm looking at Swerve and I'm like, damn, even it being like what, two weeks since that match with Hangman, you can see he's taped up. You can see the scars from the staples and all that stuff on his body. And he is still killing it and giving it his absolute best. And I love that. And we're getting the absolute best from Jay White too. But like I said, it could be one winner and we have Swerve taking the win. I would love to see these two guys um, running it back with these two guys um, in the ring, preferably with a storyline. Maybe Swerve might get the title one day and end up feuding with Jay White. That would be beautiful. I would love to see that. But I really do feel like, despite me being biased, this is Swerve's time. And I wanna see um, him win this whole thing and him get what he deserves um, out of his career. Anyway, really great um, show tonight. It was a little bit on the mid side, I'm not gonna lie, um, but uh, I did enjoy it. The tournament is advancing and we're seeing things that um, we have not seen in terms of matchups. So I had a great time watching these shows, even though I did feel a little shitty earlier, um, but it's all right. If you didn't see the show, go ahead and check it out. A lot of the clips are already on uh, YouTube if you guys wanna go ahead and check that out. Um, definitely, uh, aside from this being match of the night, that promo moment that segment with adam and christian was absolutely beautiful i'm telling you man christian is just killing it i love him so so much um so go ahead and check that out and you know if tomorrow if i feel as good as i look right now then i can go live for um ring of honor so i do hope i feel a little bit better tomorrow but guys thanks so much for watching my review i'll be back tomorrow with ring of honor you know how we do it up in here <laughs>